I just posted a video an hour ago breaking down the Vladimir Tarasenko trade to the Florida Panthers, and in that video, I said that news was starting to pick up. Man, was that ever the understatement of the century. By the time I finished uploading that video, I checked my phone again for the first time since I started recording that Tarasenko video, and boom, we have three more trades to break down now. And these aren't just minor deals either. All three of these trades we're going to talk about in this video are pretty big deals, one of which I might even go as far as saying is a blockbuster. I'm not going to waste any more of your guys' time though because this is probably going to be a pretty long trade breakdown video. Let's start off with what in my opinion is the biggest trade of the three, Bowen Byram for Casey Middlestat, one for one swap between the Sabres and the Colorado Avalanche. Now before we break down this trade, there's some of you that may already know my thoughts on this deal. In an NHL Deal or No Deal episode two weeks ago, one of you guys, HS Hockey 92 to be exact, predicted this trade to a T. Byram for Middlestat, one for one swap. In that video, I of course gave my thoughts on what at the time was a hypothetical, and I believe I did end up saying deal because I was a fan of the mock trade, and now two weeks later, that exact trade has happened. So let's break this trade down for a second time now that it has actually happened. Let's first focus on this deal from the point of view of the Buffalo Sabres. Middlestat's name has been thrown around in trade rumors for quite a while now, and I know there was a lot of people a little bit confused by that. This is a guy who's a 25 year old center was a former top 10 draft pick finally had a breakout season last year has continued to produce this season and at the time of this trade Middlestad actually led the Buffalo Sabres in points with 47 and 62 games so why would the Buffalo Sabres want to trade a player like that I think the answer is pretty simple Casey Middlestad is a restricted free agent at the end of the season and he's going to likely be in the market for a pretty big money deal and the Buffalo Sabres have already locked up a lot of their young core to big money long term deals and based off of this trade it seems like the Buffalo Sabres weren't going to be comfortable giving Casey Middlestat the kind of money the kind of term that he was going to be looking for so the Sabres decide to move on from Middlestat and in return you get a young defenseman with a lot of upside Bowen Byram is just 22 years old he's a left shot defenseman was a fourth overall selection by the Avs in 2019 he's a player that the Sabres aren't going to have to worry about extending until the summer of 2025 Byram is signed at a cap of 3.85 million through next season will be an RFA upon expiry. Byram has struggled with injuries throughout his NHL career so far. He's been inconsistent at times, but one thing he has consistently shown is his offensive upside. This is a defenseman who scored at almost a 20-goal pace last season, had 10 goals in 42 games with the Avalanche. Byram has all the tools to be an offensive weapon, the kind of defenseman that can get you 50-plus points in a season, and this now gives the Buffalo Sabres a left side of Rasmus Dahlin, Owen Power, and Bowen Byram, all three of which are 23 years of age or under that left side on the blue line has the potential to be the best left side in the entire NHL for a very very long time if the Buffalo Sabres were dead set on trading Casey Middlestad Bowen Byram in my opinion is exactly the kind of player that they should have been in the market for and should have been looking for as a return and they got that here a young player with upside who can slot into your NHL lineup right away those are my thoughts on the deal from the Sabres side of things let's now shift focus to the Avalanche acquiring Casey Middlestad I think this is a massive get for Colorado. This is the first of two avalanche trades we're going to talk about in this video. Colorado has been looking to shore up the number two center position really ever since Nazem Kadri left and signed with the Flames as a free agent. They experimented with Ryan Johansson this season. It really didn't work out. Ross Colton slotted into that position throughout times this season, and I think Ross Colton's a solid player, but I don't think he's a number two center on a Stanley Cup winning team. By making this trade, the avalanche have finally addressed that need for a number two center. Casey Middlestad, I think, should should fill that role up beautifully. He is a talented offensive player, fantastic playmaker, and he's not just a short-term fix for that second line center position either, which I think is really important here. Like I mentioned, Middlestat, only 25 years old. He's an RFA at the end of the season, so I'm sure Colorado is going to retain his rights. If the Avalanche were going to make a big splash and trade Bowen Byram, who's a former fourth overall draft pick and is a young defenseman with a lot of upside, I've said in the past that I believed it had to be for someone that can help them win this season, but also be a long-term option for them as well. In my opinion, this is a fantastic hockey trade. Nothing better than a good old one-for-one -one swap. I think it makes sense for both teams. You can debate amongst yourselves down below in the comments which team you think got better value here, but at the end of the day, I think Casey Middlestad is going to do very well for the Avalanche in that number two center role. They address the need, not just for this season, but moving forward, and I think there's a pretty strong chance that Bowen Byram turns out to be a fantastic defenseman one day as well. So in my opinion, both fan bases should be pretty happy here. Moving along 
along now to the second Colorado Avalanche trade. The Avs have acquired right shot defenseman Sean Walker along with a 2026 fifth round draft pick from the Philadelphia Flyers in exchange for Ryan Johansson and a conditional 2025 first round draft pick. The condition on that first round draft pick is that it's top 10 protected. So the Philadelphia Flyers do indeed end up landing a first round draft pick in exchange for Sean Walker. It's been reported on for a while now that that was the asking price. I know there's quite a bit of Flyers fans out there that wanted Walker to extend as opposed to the Flyers trading him, especially given the fact that Philadelphia currently sits in a playoff spot, third place in the Metro, and Sean Walker has been so solid for them this season. But at the end of the day, this is a team that's still heading in a younger direction, still building towards the future. And Sean Walker is a guy that they acquired in the offseason as sort of salary filler in that three-team Ivan Provorov deal. Walker was really an afterthought in that trade. So the fact that he had such a strong season for Philadelphia contributed to them being in a playoff position currently and was also able to fetch them a first round draft pick. That is just beautiful asset management from Danny Briere. Sure, the Flyers had to take back the Ryan Johansson contract here, but remember, Nashville is retaining salary still on Ryan Johansson, so he's only on the Flyers books for a $4 million cap hit. He signed at that number through next season. So if Johansson can play well in Philadelphia, this is a guy that they could look to move at next year's trade deadline. And if the Flyers are willing to retain some of his salary, get him down to, you know, a $2 million cap hit could turn out to be a pretty valuable trade ship depending on how Johansson performs as a member of the Flyers. Let's now shift focus and talk a little bit about this deal from the Avalanche side of things acquiring Sean Walker. It is very clear that Colorado is absolutely all in this season and why wouldn't they be? Sean Walker is having easily the best year of his NHL career, 22 points in 63 games, solid two-way analytics. This guy is a fantastic skater which he utilizes really well to evade four checkers. This now gives Colorado a right side of Kale McCarr, Sean Walker, and Josh Manson. Sounds pretty good to me. The way I look at what Colorado did today is they went from Ryan Johansson and Bowen Byram to Sean Walker and Casey Middlestat, which is a massive upgrade for a team that is trying to win a Stanley Cup this season. Sure, Bowen Byram could turn out to be an unbelievable defenseman. Maybe Philly is able to draft a star with that 2025 first round draft pick, but none of that is going to matter for the Avalanche if they win the Stanley Cup this season. That is the goal and they definitely improved the roster today. Moving along now to the final trade we have to break down in this video. The Edmonton Oilers have acquired Adam Henrique, Sam Carrick, and a 2024 seventh round draft pick in exchange for their 2024 first round draft pick and a 2025 fifth round draft pick. Anaheim is retaining 50% of both Sam Carrick and Adam Henrique's salary. The Tampa Bay Lightning also played middleman here and retained an additional 50% of Henrique's salary, so Edmonton is getting Henrique at 75 percent retained. In exchange for being the broker of this deal, Tampa received a conditional fourth round draft pick from the Edmonton Oilers, so they used some of that LTIR cap space to get an additional draft pick here and help out a team that's not in their conference, so decent bit of work there from Tampa. The condition on the 2025 fifth round draft pick that the Oilers sent to the Ducks is that if the Oilers win the cup this year, it becomes a fourth, and the condition on the draft pick that Tampa Bay got from Edmonton in this deal is the pick becomes Edmonton's fourth round pick in 2025 five instead of 2026 if the Oilers don't win the cup this year. So a lot of moving factors in this deal. Not really a whole lot to say on this deal when it comes to the Anaheim Ducks side of things. I think, you know, the most important thing is the fact that they were able to land a first round draft pick. I think a lot of us expected that they probably would for Adam Henry, given the season that he's having. For a rebuilding team, absolute no brainer to take these draft picks in exchange for a couple of pending UFAs. Let's talk about the deal from the Edmonton Oilers side of things though. And I think Adam Henry is a really big get for this team. He's having another great year, 18 goals, 42 points in 60 games. This is going to be his seventh 20 plus goal season in his career. He's a versatile player that can play the center position, do well in the faceoff dot, also slide to the wing. This is a guy that should be able to help the Oilers in pretty much all situations. I think he's going to fit very nicely on their second line. And you have to imagine Edmonton is going to be getting a very, very motivated version of Adam Henrique as this is a guy who at 34 years old has only played played 28 playoff games in his career, and 24 of those came back in 2012. Henrique has not seen the postseason in a while, and when he did all the way back in 2018, he only played four games. This is a guy that you have to imagine is going to be very excited about this opportunity. 
hungry to win and I definitely think he makes the Oilers a better team when it comes to Sam Carrick he is a veteran fourth line depth forward physical guy not sure if he's going to be an everyday player for the Oilers I was just about to wrap up but decided to check my phone before editing and I'm glad I did because we have a late edition one more trade to break down the New York Rangers have acquired centerman Alexander Wenberg from the Seattle Kraken in exchange for a 2024 second and Dallas's 2025 fourth Wenberg is a pending UFA carries a cap it of 4.5 million however the Seattle Kraken are retaining 50% so he's gonna be on the books for the Rangers at just 2.25 million Alexander Wenberg is a guy who's played big minutes this season for the Seattle Kraken I imagine with New York he's gonna take on a much lesser role probably slot in at that number three center position and fill the void left by Philip Heedle who's out for the season production wise Wenberg sort of peaked early in his career he had 59 points back in 2017 as a member of the Blue Jackets hasn't really ever been able to come close to that again doesn't bring a whole lot to the table offensively at this point in his career just nine goals and 25 points this season for the Kraken in 60 games throughout his career Wenberg has notoriously been a very strong playmaker that is his best asset his passing the numbers just haven't really been there to show for it this season so maybe going to a team like the Rangers who are obviously a lot better offensively than the Kraken we might see his assist shoot up I don't view Wenberg as a guy who's you know gonna take the Rangers to the next level and really be the piece that puts them over the top but he should be a solid number three center for them and I would say is certainly an upgrade over Johnny Brzezinski when I first saw a tweet that Wenberg to the Rangers was a done deal I was a little bit worried before seeing the return that maybe they gave up their first round draft pick here and I think that would have been a massive overpayment but they didn't have to give up any other top prospects they didn't have to give up a first so I think this is a fine deal for the Rangers and if you're a Kraken fan really don't think you can complain too much about the return that Seattle got here a second round draft pick for Wenberg I think they got pretty good value there so that is going to wrap up today's video breaking down the four trades that have happened today following the Vladimir Tarasenko trade to the Florida Panthers. As always, I want to know your guys' thoughts, so if your favorite team was involved in any of the four deals we touched on in this video, let me know how you're feeling down below in the comments. If you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to leave it a like. It definitely does help the videos out a ton. And most importantly, if this was your first time checking out the channel and you want NHL content just like this all year round, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you all again soon.